I grew up in nature. Fleming, but at the time it was called Fleming Dash Neon. Fleming was like the coal camps. And Neon was the town. My playground was the woods and the mountaintops. Just through ex exploration and seeing all of nature's beauty, it awakened my creative spirit. I mean, that's when I really knew for sure that that's what I wanted to be. I didn't have any formal training in art until I come to college. They didn't offer it where I grew up, but I did have like high school teachers that were interested in art and saw m my abilities and they also encouraged me to go to Moorhead. And I'm glad I did because at the time, the art department was powerful. I had some incredible teachers. I remember he got a commission just for, um, I'm pretty sure it was just his like free will of creativity for um, a sculpture park in Ohio named Pyramid Hill. I remember it was like 18 foot, you know, like clay statues. And I remember him making it and working on it and him having to like bring it out of the garage and stand it up to be able to work on it because it was so tall. And you know, that, that was another point where I realized what a big deal my dad was because I was just watching him make this in our garage. My house is, is it's kind of, I call it a site specific functional piece of sculpture, you know? So I love, you know, working with my hands and it's very rewarding. In its own way, my dad's house is kind of another one of his creations. It's kind of a unique house, <laughs> to put it lightly, to grow up in. Um, I thought everybody had a swing in their house growing up. It's kind of like walking through a gallery every single time you walk into the house. He's very, very deeply ingrained in his Eastern Kentucky roots, and it is not something that he is ashamed of or ever feels conscious about. Um, he actually puts it on display. Growing up, I can't tell you how many times I had soup beans and cornbread for dinner <laughs> and greens um, that he fixed. And um, yeah, he, he has had the same iron skillet for cornbread for I don't know how many years. And now that I've understood the art of it, I've asked him to uh, leave that to me. You know, when she was thinking about going to college, Sanford, Sanford, you know, all these, top colleges, and I said, well, if apply, you know, we'll see, you know. But in my heart, of hearts, you know, I was hoping that she would be going to Moorhead because Moorhead had a really strong medical and, you know, science program. Moorhead is a state school, but it's smaller, and I know a lot of other universities were, like, huge lecture halls of like 100 to 200 people versus Moorhead was more like 40 to 50 people in a class. So I felt like I could get a better education here for um, what I wanted to pursue and not just be another nameless face in the crowd. When we began discussing unique ways that we could celebrate our centennial celebration here on campus, the idea of this bronze mascot on campus was brought to life. And we knew that it was something that we wanted to pursue, but we knew we would need the help of our alumni community to make it possible. We began discussing alumni that may have interest in the project, not from just a artwork perspective, but from really creating a legacy on campus. An alumni who had the passion to give back, an alumni who had the um, desire to make a difference and really create that legacy. And Ron Cartier was that alumni. The first time I met him, uh, it was like I knew him. You know, he was so gregarious, and and as a matter of fact, he knew Ingrid's father. He would, Ron started out in the trades, and so it's just it was almost automatically we were kindred in ways, and uh, and he was so excited. Like whenever they announced it last year, he said, whenever he said that when they approached me to help with this. He asked who was going to do it. 
and he was told Sam, well, when I heard Sam McKinley was going to do it, I was on, you know, I was in. <laughs> so consequently, ever since, you know, he's been coming up, looking at the process, calling me, and, and, and just his reactions to it all is inspiration for me, it has been. Ron Carty came back to campus in 2015 for his 50 year reunion. He immediately started sharing how he wanted to be more involved with the university. And, and since that time, it's, it's been an honor to see all that Ron and Diane and the Carty family have accomplished and how they've made a difference here on campus. He is truly an eagle who wants to make a difference and gives back in every way that he possibly can. When I start a big project like this, I have it all in my mind the whole way through. I had to build an armature is what it's called. It's a support structure out of steel. Then I apply the clay on top of this armature. Then the next step, you have to take molds off of that. And that's, you use a two-part liquid rubber. And then you apply the rubber on, over top of the clay. Then after you put the rubber on all of it, then you have to go back and put plaster over top of the rubber. Then you take that, these molds to a foundry, and then I, I get the pieces back. Then I have to weld them all together and make sure they fit. After you do that, you have to clean up the wells and emulate or copy the texture. So in the feathers, I had to do all those striations so you can't see the wells. And then you have to sandblast it and that makes the whole surface consistent. Then you use chemicals to get the colors you want. After that all dries, and the bronze, the bronze is dried, then you coat it in a clear coat. And that's the process. <laughs> so I love, you know, working with my hands and it's very rewarding. And like I, you know, I referred to painting, it's more cerebral, even though there's challenges. No, there's no comparison to the challenge between sculpture and painting. There's just not. I've trained myself over the years of whenever I start a project. I excogitate it. That's the word that you think it through completely to every detail. You think. <laughs> and so you've got a plan and you always arrive. You come up with a problem that you didn't foresee. And you know, and a lot of times you can't go out and buy a tool to solve it. You have to make your own tool to solve the problem. You know, and it's, uh, that's, that excites me. I'm really, really proud of him, obviously. It is such a, just kind of immortalization of my father and also, you know, our family and everybody that's attended there. It's really crazy to think about that he's going to have such a huge piece of campus that he, created and gave to everyone and just any time that I'm on campus in the future or if I ever decide to have children and they ever go to Moorhead, I can just be like, yeah, like your grandpa did this. This project is going to become a landmark on campus and it's not only reflecting on our last hundred years and our centennial celebration, but it's going to be something that will aspire eagles today and in the future. It's an honor, and I'm grateful. Um, and yes, uh, to have a piece of my work there that has my DNA all over it. I've got a saying, which is, <laughs> you know, artists are like slugs. They leave the slimy trail <laughs> after they're gone, you know. It's just so rewarding to finally have, want to have peace there. Like I say, it's going to be there long after I'm gone and hopefully appreciated by new generations. You know?